Hi everyone, it's Rob Watson, the module leader for Tech 1002, and this is the summary uh, for the lecture, which is number 22, and the title is Collective Intelligence. What I'm going to do in this lecture is pull together some of the ideas uh, which are directly re relevant for the exam. Uh, it's around about the idea of following on from uh, the previous weeks, from week 21's lecture, about the kind of network culture skills that we need. Uh, and we'll look at in more detail what Howard Rheingold talks about in terms of the need for our ability to collaborate and the way in which uh, networks and our role within networks is to kind of shape and access and process and form, uh, if you like, a kind of sense of bridging between different communities, different ideas, different cultures. Um, so Rheingold uses, uh, talks a lot about how um, we... Uh, think about ourselves often as discrete individuals uh, we're kind of almost atomized if you like it's part of the the dangers the anxiety of modern life is that we're seen as kind of individuals with no connections to other people uh, what our online social life has the potential to do is to enable us to connect with other people in a way that is meaningful based around things that we're interested in and that we have a shared interest about so the nature of us really becoming rather than a, a builder of walls but a builder of bridges is fundamental to some of the promise and some of the uh, maybe utopian expectations of what uh, social media can do. Uh, Rheingold talks about how um, our online life though is different from our uh, physical real world life in the way that we use technology uh, to mediate ourselves within a series of global uh, information networks and there are things that we need to look out for which challenge and change and shape the nature of participation in online life and our expectations about our role in uh, our civic and public spaces that are defined online which are maybe different from or indeed are very different from the traditional ways uh, that we've identified a kind of space within society through uh, forms of identity through maybe our, our faith or through our allegiance to a football club or a town or a workplace. The online uh, social engagements that we're enabled to undertake and to act out uh, give us more scope and a greater range of connections uh, than we've had previously before. But how do we do that? How do we work that? How do we do that in a way which is sustainable, which is ethical, uh, and which is nurturing rather than merely just kind of a being a kind of a popularity grab, if you like? So Rheingold talks about the kind of, you know, networks, are, they're not simple, they're not rigid, they're not tightly bound by people in power. Uh, they're open, uh, they're more widespread, and they offer people the opportunity to interact in ways which had not been previously uh, identified uh, and you can talk and engage in relationships with people uh, which you might not have otherwise had the opportunity to do merely because you have a common interest with them and this brings forward the notion of collaboration we look again at the kind of work of Jake, Jason Mittal who talks about the kind of way that wikis have underpinned a, 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 a very important change towards things like knowledge communities and, and, and communities of practice. So the things that we're interested in, the things that we want to think about and talk about through the wikis uh, are places where we can express that and we can come together to produce knowledge which we couldn't produce by ourselves. So it's kind of we our sense of identity through these collaborative practices. They're kind of emerging and they're kind of forming all the time. And that ties in with Jason Mittal's five principles of wikis, which are freedom, transparency, fluidity, emergence and collective intelligence. They might be useful for one of the exam questions, maybe. Uh, and if we think about it, you know, kind of we can often operate as individuals, but how if we pool our expertise, we might have a better chance of solving some of the very real and very complex problems that your generation particularly is going to face uh, in the future. And we talked a few weeks ago before the enhancement week about the role of playing gamification. So I'll look back over some of this. And one of the key principles that uh, Jones and Hafner talk about is the way that games create not just a kind of sense of play, but also a space, what they call an affinity space, which is something that's shared and something which is common to people in a kind of virtual environment way, uh, which allow people to kind of 
um, engage in a set of collaborative practices or collaborative scenarios which they wouldn't have otherwise been able to engage in. And it in, in, in induces, if you like, according to Jones and Hafner, a kind of more active sense of critical learning, which is one of the key you know, things that we're interested in. So it's kind of how can we use gaming as a way to th rethink through uh, the, the, the world of the future? This is actually having an effect in things like economics and uh, ecological development as people are able to plan and map out and use computer simulations in order to reflect not just an abstract you know, kind of mathematical, quasi-scientific view of how, how people work and interact, but can actually model in and build in some real-world examples of interaction that kind of are generated by the people themselves as agents rather than just purely numbers on a spreadsheet, if you like. So we're, we're focusing really on the idea of kind of participation and what participation brings, and really to the, the extent that participation unlocks a sense of potential within people, and then it generates a kind of sense of citizen's power, a power from below, we talked about this last week, coupled in with the spreadability model, and coupled in with the way that we use media in a kind of more quotable or requotable or more plastic, remixable, modifiable kind of way. Uh, so there's, uh, emerging from this, there's, it's argued, a kind of a, a greater sense of collective intelligence where we're more than the sum of our parts, where we can kind of engage uh, together to be able to meet some of the problems of uh, social in, uh, uh, sustainability and the development of our societies by not being so hung up about the way that we did things in the past. So the command and control model is less attractive and a more sociable model is something that we need to be able to engage in and understand if we're going to come up with more creative and inventive solutions in the future. So the notes are up on the DMU Commons wiki. That's at wiki.our.dmu.ac.uk. Uh, just search for the Tech 1002 page. I've got the PowerPoint presentations ready and I will, there's some uh, video clips and music clips in there as well. Uh, the reading for this particular lecture is, uh, it's the Howard Ryan Gold Chapter 4, Social Digital Know-How, The Art and Science of Collective Intelligence. So it's very relevant to what we're talking about. Sorry I've gone on a bit on this one. There's a lot to get through, uh, a lot of key ideas which are relevant for the exam. Uh, and uh, I will see you on Thursday morning.